Welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert biz show, brought to you by gtex.org.uk. This is episode 137 with Simon Jacobs, How to Disrupt Your Industry. Uh, I'm your host, Simone Vincenzi, the expert strategist, and this is the podcast for experts who want to become the ultimate authorities in their niche while making an impact in the world. As I said, today I have the pleasure to interview the one and only our GTEx Lifetime member, Simon Jacobs. And Simon Jacobs is the professional weirdo. He started his first company at 16, his second while he was at university, his third a few years later helping other startups with their marketing challenges, and now he's building his fourth companies, which aims to help individuals and companies to think differently, be more creative, and take chances. He believes that being weird and just embracing it has been the key to his success. He wants to enable everyone so that uh, they can unleash their inner weirdos too. His new business is called Professional Weirdos, so stay tuned because things are about to get real weird. <laughs> In this interview, we talk about how to disrupt your industry, what companies can do to stay ahead of the game, and also how to stand out with your marketing material. The stories that Simon shared were unbelievable. So stay tuned, listen to this until the end, because uh, it will question how you do things. You can read the interview transcript and get bonus resources at www.gtex.org.uk forward slash 137. And then you can connect also with Simon with all the links here in the show notes. You have the opportunity as well by listening to this show to apply and become a GTEx member. If you want us to help you become the authority in your niche, to stand out, to build your audience, expand your following, create kick-ass products, and in particular, make a lot of money while making an impact in the world, then apply to become a GTEx member because we are the right people for you. And if you want to become to make six-figure presentation and become awesome at selling from the stage, why don't you download our free selling from the stage checklist? Made more than seven figures uh, using this structure, this script, and uh, I created a checklist for you so you can download it here in the show notes. And um, also join our Facebook group where you can connect with uh, Simon, with all the other guests that we interview, and uh, you can access exclusive training that I do weekly just for you. And uh, the group is called Explode Your Expert Biz. Same name of the podcast. You can find the link in the show notes or you can then uh, you can find it on Facebook. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, subscribe right now. I'm saying right, right now. Just subscribe here now. Done it? Cool. Well done. I love you. And uh, this way you make sure you don't miss any other episode. And uh, if you have uh, anything, any question for me, you can email me at simone at gtex.org.uk. That comes straight into my inbox. Without further ado, let's hear it from uh, Simon Jacobs, How to Disrupt Your Industry. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to another episode of Explode, your expert biz show. Today I'm here with the one and only Simon Jacobs. How are you doing, Simon? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, very good. Pleased to, pleased to be on this. Uh, nice and bright early in the morning. Yeah. Nice and bright early in the morning. I'm really excited about this interview because it's going to be all about disruption. And I think that's something that, um, from the brief conversation that we had before the show, something that not a lot of people really think about. Uh, and uh, I think it's going to be a great interview for everyone who wants to stand out. And Absolutely. want to be the next big thing instead of being left behind. So make sure that you stay out in the end. But before we get into that, Simon, uh, what's your story? How did you get into disruption? <laughs> sure. Um, so, so, so my background, I, I, I suppose really I've always um, been a disruptor um someone who's thought differently um so even even when i was in sixth form for example when i was at school um i wanted to create sort of a magazine um i'd been looking for a first car 
and couldn't find any proper information online, whether it be, you know, looking at Top Geisha by Lamborghini or the really boring stuff. Didn't the, the, the people who were writing it were 40 plus and didn't really understand the youth market. So I decided that when I had when I went through the rigor roll to get my first car, I would start a magazine, an online an online blog, I suppose. And that quickly spiraled, um, snowballed into a bigger thing for our school. It tended to be a gossip magazine for the school, and uh, quickly got got sort of my name out into the school. And I should the week before I left left sixth form go, to go to university, the headmaster called me in and said, "Simon, you've got to shut it down." There was some less than savoury piece of information about the teachers on there, um, but I kind of loved that. Um, and so when I went to university, I wanted to sort of carry that on. And when I got there, the magazine that was running at the university shut down. So I thought, okay, well, I've got a tiny bit of experience. Um, and, you know, I also don't really have anything to lose. So I went around the local the, the local shops in Nottingham and started selling advertising space for this magazine that I was going to produce. Um, quickly got enough together to be able to print this magazine, pulled together about 50 students to write it, design it, etc., and then put it out. Um, and it was, it was a bit controversial. There were some uh scantily clad students um and it, it was called uni to know and then a week later when we handed out all the ten thousand copies i got called into the into the marketing department of the university again and got told off because i wasn't allowed to use their name wasn't allowed to do this wasn't allowed to do that um and it's sort of, and while i was being shouted at it sort of dawned on me that actually no i was in the right i was being entrepreneurial um i was at a business university so i told them i don't know what you're talking about you should be encouraging me not you know slapping me down um and what did so, they say what did they say then oh they were saying a bunch of things like you can't you can't print it you can't use our name you can't um you can't ra- hand it around on campus without permission i said you should be telling me things that i should be doing and um acknowledging the fact that i've been entrepreneurial and got off my ass um <laughs> unlike the rest of the students who either yeah you know, i was going out as well but the rest of the students went out had hangovers and they went to lectures or maybe they didn't go to lectures um <laughs> but i i, I Compared to compared to other people at the university, I was being you know um, positive and moving and doing stuff. Yes. So uh, you know, and and they just didn't have that mindset. They were in the, already in a business university, regardless of what you went. They were in like the the corporate pigeonhole zone, um, and that that sort of triggered my thinking um, following on from that. But the business, I, I carried on with my course. The business grew. I got an investor and a business partner. Um, it grew into a fully fledged student service company, and I was the marketing. I was the chief marketing officer, essentially. We set up the brand, we set up the website, and to get ourselves out there, we we did some some interesting stunts, some interesting things um, that caught attention. Um, like and what? Was, so we we bought a classic car, we painted it purple, and we drove it around campus. We made sure the engine was nice and loud. Um, we got a mascot. We walked we walked around that. Um, we put up some rent signs, so we, we we were we were a estate agent, so we had some rent signs, rent side uh, rent signs made, and we put them around like famous buildings around Nottingham. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so those are sort those are sort of the ideas, and they were they they, they just sort of formed in my head. Um, and so <laughs> during, during that. During, <laughs> I love it. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. So during that period of time, um, I, that was when I sort of started to realize that I was, I, I thought differently to other people, um, especially when I was comparing myself to people on my course who best friends I've got now on my course, but they would, they would go out, they would get drunk, they would go to lectures and then they would do their exams. Um, and that, and that all their mindset was, okay, I want to get a good job. I want to do this. I want to do that. And it was always, um, sort of the nine to five mindset. Um, and so then when, when I finished uni, um, the, the business took a few turns. Um, um, basically, I decided to step back from it after about three and a half years working on it, let my other two business partners run the day to day. And then I started doing some marketing consultancy. Um, I was doing it for startups, medium sized firms, um, based on the knowledge that I'd grown from, from my own business, basically, helping them avoid the pitfalls that I'd fallen <laughs> in um, and achieve success, basically. And then whilst I was doing some talks on youth marketing, um, there was someone in the audience of one of my talks who was working with Camelot at Camelot. And so they were looking for young people to come into the business and help them um, attack that youth market, essentially, get younger people playing the lottery, um, playing their games, etc. Quite an exciting, quite an exciting idea. Never worked with a big corporate before, really. Um, so I packed off all my stuff and moved to London. 
um, was doing youth marketing with them on various courses and things. And then over the space of about six months, I grew through the business um, and became brand manager for the scratch card category, which is like a three billion pound um, industry. Um, and I was told I'd be looking after TV campaigns, advertising campaigns, the whole marketing department, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, first of all, that was that was really incredible to be able to give it, be given the opportunity as a sort of a 25 year old amongst other you know 20 year olds that I'd basically risen above them, um, and I was going to board meetings. Um, but the reality of the job wasn't what I was told it was going to be. It was a lot more accountancy. It was a lot more corporate stuff that really just isn't my bag. Um, and I didn't like. I, I wasn't that keen on the culture. Um, that's not to say that the culture isn't good. It's just not. It's just not my my style. Um, and I was fortunate in the sense that at the same time as I was thinking that I didn't like this job, uh, my business partners or one of my business partners offered to buy out my shares of my company. And so. At the same time, I sold my shares and handed in my notice for Camelot. <laughs> and um, I got a month's gardening leave, which was cool. And so that, that month gave me sort of a chance to just do nothing, which is kind of what I needed because I hadn't had a gap year. Not that you needed a gap year, but I hadn't given myself any time to think about what I wanted to do. And, um, and so then w- when I did have some chance to think about what I wanted to do next, I spoke to a few friends, one of which said, Simon, you're a bit weird. And, um, and sort of that, that, that created a sort of a light bulb moment. And they said, the, you know, your weirdness is probably the reason you've had success, um, in the yeah. as you know, to date. Um, and if you can bottle that in some way, if you can teach people how to do it, I think you'd be onto something. And so, so that's two points. One, definitely she's definitely, she was right that, you know, the, there is, there is, um, a, a value in being weird, a value in being different. And two, um, it's not necessarily about um, making this business the next big success, the biggest thing. It's actually, for me, it's about, I, I want people to be more of a minded, challenge, um, think differently. Because at the moment, you know, being in this world where I'm one of the people who thinks differently, it's uh, it's difficult to have these conversations with people. So I want to be able to open people's minds um, and have the same sort of conversations. So like. let, let's start opening some minds and yeah. uh, let's start talking about uh, disruption. Yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, that uh, you know companies uh, uh, are making a big mistake during yep. our chat before the interview. What is the mistake that you see them making? So it's it's that they are currently looking how to be more efficient, um, how to produce the better version of their current products. So, for example, the refrigerator industry. Um, I can't think of a of a company right now. Samsung or Whirlpool, for example. Mm-hmm. They're all thinking about how can we make more space in our refrigerators for our consumers? How can we make them more efficient, energy efficient? Um, how can we make them look cooler in the kitchen? Whatever it might be. When in reality, the next industry, the next r- reality in the next 20, 30 years is going to be home delivered food. So, I mean, people like Amazon, um, Just Eat, Deliveroo, etc. They're the next industry where people probably won't be holding stock of, of uh, food in their fridges as and when they want a meal. They'll order it, it'll be delivered in the next 20 minutes. It'll be home cooked, it'll be fresh, and it'll be quick. Um, and it'll reduce the space that you need in your house. And as space across the world is becoming more and more limited, people are going to be wanting less and less clutter in the house. And therefore, if you were, in, if you were thinking differently, more outside the box, um, able to you know, step outside of that corporate world just for a second, you'd realize that the money that you're putting into this research, this development, is probably better spent, or at least at some 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 regard, on the next the next industry. What can a company do, um, or if you know, we're talking about large company, we're talking also about small companies, to be ahead? Because uh, it's not easy. I mean, uh, I'm just think if I have to think about GTEx uh, and say mm. no, like. You, you you got famous doing doing what you do right now. Stop doing yeah. it and start doing something different. I, I will be like, well, that that what got me good so far, and that's what's working. So I don't want to change. Um, so what are some things that small or even large businesses can do to be ahead and to be different uh, instead of you know holding the chair tight yeah, yeah. and not wanting to move? <laughs> yeah. So that's a really good question. Um, I mean, the, the, the first step for me is having an open mindset. Um, 
and that, that's a very difficult thing to to get um it takes takes time um it takes patience but one of my first steps that i tell people is actually there's a book that i read that you know as cliche as it sounds changed my life um it's called yes man by danny wallace it's not meant to be a self-help motivational book um but if you if you if you take in what what he's talking about which is essentially saying yes to things um your mind starts to open when you realize when you realize how often you say no um and so for business owners ceos whatever level they are if they take a step back and just look at the times that they say no or just don't accept what people are saying you don't necessarily have to bring it on board but just listen um you'll realize how much more information you get and then you have the ability to look forward and and see what opportunities what potential what is the future um and then you know it's very possible that the next thing will excite you it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to completely jump ship um, so for in your in your instance, you know, you've been successful in what you've done. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to jump onto the next thing, whether that be, I don't know, 3D modeling, for example. <laughs> it just means that perhaps, you know, you would consider investing in a 3D printer, which is a lower which is a lower form of investment, but it means that you can start working on it, start looking into yeah. it. So when the next when the next thing comes, you 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 at least know what it'll be, what it's about, you have the first first iteration. Yeah. That's a very good point. Uh, um, I've actually done something similar recently. Uh, I it, it's something simple. Uh, I heard uh, right now the future of marketing for many companies is going to be um, like voice technology, where yeah. you will talk into like Alexa or mm-hmm. Google Home. Uh, or whatever else will come out. Yep. And in fact, I, I said Alexa, and Alexa is talking to me right now <laughs> <laughs> from the other room. Yeah, uh, she, she's, she's always on. she's always <laughs> listening. That woman, Jesus. Um, and uh, it is so. Uh, I I knew that, so I decided to buy literally the cheapest of the Alexa, and mm-hmm. got myself got one of my podcasts. I created literally a three minute podcast mm-hmm. that will go on Alexa just to test how that was going to be and to get yeah. myself used to becoming a consumer and see, okay, how can I serve that market, which is definitely rapidly growing and that's mm-hmm. going to be the future. So I think that there are, it doesn't have to be a huge thing that you have yeah. to do, but it can be some small things yeah. that, uh, you know, it's just say, okay, wh- what can I, wh- what else can I do? What can I, yeah. I have, maybe 10% of my time or a couple of hours that I can play with this yeah. new project. Maybe it's going to work. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe it's, it's not uh, going to work. Absolutely. And that, and that attitude in itself is something that I would say to corporates, um, you know, there's, there's, there's such a element of fear in the corporate world that, you know, we can't do anything wrong. We can't lose any money. We can't, we, you know, so I, either you need to break away from that completely and you need to change the culture or perhaps bring in startups or younger people. It doesn't have to necessarily be young people. People who are willing to challenge and have a separate entity that is associated with the business, have an incubator or whatever um, of a company that is willing to test things. Yeah. And then you know either, either they discover something that's going to be amazing in the next thing, or they don't. And if they do create something successful, that's great. You own shares in it, or you own it, or whatever. You can jump ship, or it's a loss, and you you have no association with that business. Um, that you know that that's how you extrapolate it to the to the bigger world. I would say. Then I think there are a lot of corporates uh, that uh, are already adopting this model. Find that they are buying smaller startups uh, just to test that uh, at the end of the day they got capital, and most of the time it's not even their own capital. So uh, <laughs> and and they've got uh, and they've got nothing to lose, but yep. uh, they keep things moving. Otherwise, they end up being uh, like a blockbuster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They end up being like Maplin, they end up being yeah. like House of Razor, or like right now you see all these giant companies that yep. are literally falling down like petals. And yep. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, you know, House of Fraser or any, or any of the big clothing chains, for example, that have, that have fallen, that's because they've, they've not thought about their next industry. Um, they've been followers. They, they, they were leaders and then they became followers. Um, and then when they became followers, they didn't, they didn't follow properly. They just did, <laughs> oh, we better do a copy version, um, forgetting that their brand is, were, were known as the leaders. Um, and if they'd been a bit more innovative, they would have created something you know, completely different to, the, to their new competitors. And that mm-hmm. would have set them apart. Um, House of Fraser, you know, they could have they could have been the people. They had all the money in the world to invest in drone technology, for example, 
which could have been which could have wiped out the delivery industry. Um, it's just it, it, it's it's being open minded to these possibilities and not being fearful of things failing because now we're in a day and age where people sort of accept that everything's sort of an experiment. It's an iteration. It's a beta version. Um, and so as long as as long as you're personable with people and apologize when things go wrong, people are accepting of it. And that uh, also applies to you know, a lot of our listeners. Uh, they are solopreneurs, uh, they are um, experts, uh, they are coaches, trainers, speakers, consultants. Uh, and that applies also in that industry too. It's about yep. uh, not be afraid to test something new. If you have an idea, yep. unless it's uh, breaking the law <laughs> or you're doing something illegal, <laughs> yep. then uh, go for it. <laughs> exactly, definitely. Uh, <laughs> What, what's the worst that can happen? I mean, of course, put in some thoughts, but don't. Uh, yeah. You can always, uh, you can always test uh, something new and uh, and then see how it works. Because uh, uh, otherwise, I mean, otherwise you see people doing the same exact thing, same exact things, same yeah. exact things. And I'm and I'm guilty of that. Um, mm -hmm. There are some things that I'm testing that I'm doing new, and there are other things that I'm. I know they work, and I just do them because yeah. they work. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, with the awareness, and I think that's what's important from what I got from your interview, from our interview, is that having the awareness that it might work now, but it might fade in the future or Absolutely. it will not yeah. work in the future. So what I, how are you going to prepare yourself to make sure that you're still in business? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. brilliant. Absolutely. Um, now, Simon, we are we are wrapping up the interview. Two more questions. Uh, you are one of our lifetime members, which I'm really happy with. Uh, quick thought on uh, why did you join the lifetime membership? Sure. So over the three days of the, I suppose, extended weekend, um, you know, I'd, I'd been gestating about this this weirdness stuff. Um, I'd, I'd grown a Facebook group, um, but it didn't have a real form in terms of the business sense. Um, and so just, just on the three days alone was sort of a, a practical sit me down, shut up time and do this, get this done. And by the end of the three days, I had something that um, was at the very least, you know, the bare bones of the business, um, which sort of set me up to, to carry on going, which was great. And I, I, I needed that essentially. Um, and I got so much from the three days. Um, both from all the people in the room, but also from, from yourself, um, from Ben, etc. Um, and so the, the, the idea of the, the concept of the continued support was, was immensely, immensely exciting. Um, and having, and having a group of people I can go back to as and when, but also to give me a kick up the ass when I need it. Um, uh, so that, that's, that's essentially why I, why I joined the lifetime membership. Um, and obviously there, there's the list of the, all, all the features, um, <laughs> which, you know, I probably can't even remember a fifth of them. There were so many. Um, so that's, the, you know, the, the benefits are endless. But for me, more than anything, it's sort of the support and also the, the kick up the arse, which is what I need, a regular, a regular check-in to see how I'm doing. Fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing. And uh, now if uh, someone, there are some people that uh, want, that are listening, they say, well, yeah. I need some of Simon genius and Simon weirdness uh, into my business because that definitely can help me stand out. What's the best way to reach out to you? So the best way to reach out to me would probably be through LinkedIn. Um, so I'm Simon Jacobs on there. Lord Simon Jacobs, actually. Um, and you'll see of my course, profile picture. Of course, well, of course, Lord you know, you're going to do it properly. You're going to do it properly. Um, and you'll see my profile picture is my tongue, like that. Um, so you won't be able to see my face. And um, or you can join the Facebook group um, if you wanted to get involved in the conversations about being weird. That's called professional weirdos. Just type that in, and um, I'll accept you. And Fantastic. yeah, those are the two best ways. And there are the links are going to be in the show notes. So scroll down and. Uh, click with that thumb this uh, those links and make sure that you connect with uh, Simon Jacobs because uh, um, there are very few people that I've seen uh, with such creative ideas uh, that uh, literally can set you apart from everyone else because no one else is doing those stuff and so I had a, like from the conversation that we, we had today and a conversation that we had in the past the conversation that I've heard from y you that you had with uh, with Jeff as well I was like man this, this man is a genius uh, like, <laughs> literally this man is a genius but I think we're going to hire you at some point for GTEx <laughs> for one of our marketing campaigns Love so that. <laughs> wait for that call Great. all right Simon uh, it's been a pleasure uh, being on a call with you I wish you a fantastic day 
and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, Tony. Have a good week. You're welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to the show. Uh, If you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for? Subscribe right now so you don't miss any of these golden nuggets. And also it will mean the world to me if you can leave us a five-star review uh, on iTunes or other podcasting platform and let us know what did you enjoy the most about this episode? What did you enjoy the most about the show? Particularly if you've been a loyal listener because I know that many of you are. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time. And remember that together we grow exponentially. Ciao.